again, everybody, and welcome back to Groundhopper Soccer Guides. My name is Paul Gerald, and today I want to talk about some of the historic football grounds or stadiums uh, where I have enjoyed seeing games uh, all over England. Um, there's a lot of things I enjoy about seeing soccer games in England. Uh, the atmosphere, the singing, uh, meeting the supporters, checking out the pubs, the towns, the cities. Uh, contrary to popular opinion, I actually enjoy a lot of the food, um, but sometimes it's the stadium itself uh, that to me is worth uh, the trip, uh, destination uh, in itself, you might say. Uh, and in some cases, because, you know, these are historic stadiums, they're not going to be around forever. For example, Tottenham just built a beautiful new stadium, uh, but... Uh, if you didn't get to go to White Hart Lane, then you kind of missed something. Brentford has just built a new stadium in West London. Same thing. If you didn't get to Griffin Park, you missed uh, an essential uh, experience there. So part of what I'm doing here is just pointing out some places. Next time you go to England, you want to go to some games, be sure and check out some of these cool old grounds. By the way, the whole list is in my book, Groundhopper Guide to Soccer in England, all updated for the current season. You can buy a signed copy on the website. Uh, and there's a blog post about all of this down here uh, at groundhopperguides.com. So check that out as well. All right, well, let's take a look at some of the top uh, historic football grounds around England. These are all in the top two tiers, the Championship and the Premier League, with one uh, bonus ground in League One. All right, enjoy. Okay, let's start at Everton Football Club up in Liverpool. This is definitely one that needs to be high on your list because they are about to replace it. I don't know the exact timeline, but uh, Goodison Park is going to give way to a beautiful new stadium uh, probably down by the River Mersey, and I'm sure it will be lovely and amazing, uh, but it will not be Goodison Park, and it won't be tucked into a neighborhood like Goodison so famously is here. Stadium on right, uh, Homes on the left. Uh, this is another good view that you really kind of gives you some perspective when you're walking up to the stadium. It's right in the middle of town. In fact, right across the street is the Winslow Hotel. It calls itself the People's Pub because Everton is the People's Club. And uh, what's nice about it is that inside it's just kind of an old-fashioned pub with uh, uh, an Everton feel about it. Uh, they also have uh, a church that is uh, right on the corner of the property that you can actually see from some parts of the stadium. Uh, you want to go in there before the game because they have a little flea market upstairs of Everton goods. Uh, and inside, you know, it's famous for all these supporting pillars. Uh, so sometimes you have uh, an old-fashioned, uh, not very great view, but it just feels like a proper old football ground with the wood seats, uh, with... Uh, all of the pillars and everything feels close to the action. Uh, parts of this stadium are many decades old uh, and just really a terrific place to go. Even the bathrooms, by the way, kind of old school with the tile and the club crest and everything. Uh, next up down in London is Fulham Football Club. Uh, this is Craven Cottage. Uh, they've been on this spot since the uh, about 1880 and uh, this particular part, the Johnny Haynes stand, is actually a uh, historic protected building. Uh, and actually getting to Fulham is part of the challenge or the, uh, the romance of the place. Uh, you walk through this beautiful park uh, along the River Thames. Uh, you see the ground there uh, coming up. And uh, then you go into the turnstiles, which really take you back uh, and uh, here's the stadium right next to the river. This, by the way, is the Riverside Stand, which is currently being completely rebuilt. So uh, it's going to be much larger and more impressive. Uh, this is what it used to look like, uh, but it will still back right up to the river. Uh, this is the uh, other side of the Johnny Haynes Stand with its famous uh, gable there. And again, wood seats underneath there. This is the actual cottage of Craven Cottage. Uh, that is where the locker rooms are, and uh, the players' uh, wives and girlfriends and family all sit on the uh, front porch there. That's another view of uh, the cottage, uh, and on the stadium tour you get to go in, and how old is this place? That's the home dressing room. <laughs> uh, that is seriously small. Uh, still looks great when it's full of people. Love Craven Cottage. Uh, proper footballing ground. Uh, here's uh, Bramall Lane, beautiful downtown Bramall Lane, the home of Sheffield United FC. Uh, this is kind of the backside of the stadium, so there is a more impressive uh, entrance, but this kind of gives you a feel for it. I went up there in 2014 for an FA Cup game, and uh, this is the uh, announcement of such uh, that was on the old brick wall there. So um, this was uh, back when they were in League One, and this is well before the game, so there was a better crowd than this, but this is 
what I mean by sort of an old-fashioned uh, feel uh, inside the ground. Uh, this is in the away end, and you can see the screen above there so that the people above you can't drop, uh, you know, welcome gifts down upon uh, their traveling fans. This is from their current Premier League days uh, when the stadium was full for a derby with Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, it's about a little over 30,000 seats and can really get rocking. Uh, and again, right in the middle of town. So great uh, stadium there. This is the cop end. Uh, next up, Burnley Football Club. Burnley is a city of just over 70,000 people. Uh, so to be in the Premier League as long as they have been is really impressive. Uh, and they've been playing here since about 1900. Uh, obviously not the stadium is not that old, but parts of it you kind of look at and you think, wow, this is uh, was probably that part was probably built in the 50s or 60s and was very impressive uh, in its day. You know, here's the official grand entrance at the Bob Lord stand. Uh, and this is inside the Bob Lord stand. Again, some supporting pillars, uh, but everything is close to the action. It's just over 20,000 seats. Uh, that's the away end down there. You see all those blue shirts? Those are uh, uh, Everton supporters. Again, with the wood seats like at some of these other grounds. Love Turf Moor and really love the pub across the street where they turned the uh, manager, Sean Dyche, into a bit of royalty. Uh, be sure and drop into the Royal Dyche for a pregame pint. Uh, Loftus Road Stadium, home of Queen's Park Rangers in West London. You can see this is right in the middle of town. as a street that they have to close on uh, game days. This is actually from inside the stadium having a pregame pint, and you can see the houses are just across the way there. And when you are in your seat, uh, you are never far away. Only 18,000 seats, so never far from the, stand, uh, from the pitch. Just across the way there to the left is the away end. So uh, when it's full, uh, it is exciting. It is also cramped. I'm six foot one, and you can see the person in front of me basically was going to be sitting in my lap during the game. So, uh, But they can get a really good atmosphere in there when they're up for it. Uh, and like I said, you're right on top of the action all the time. Uh, also in London, Crystal Palace, Selhurst Park. Uh, this is part of the newer part of the stadium. Uh, but again, uh, here in the entrance uh, for the away end, uh, you can uh, see how close they are to the neighborhood. This is a nice one because on the inside, it's a big, impressive stadium in some parts. That's the Holmesdale Road end. Uh, and then you have the main stand across the way that was built in 1925 and is also, by the way, about to be replaced. So... Uh, you want to go there before they go and build some very impressive new thing. Uh, they probably won't have these supporting pillars and overhead roof uh, like you have here. When the goal kick, uh, for example, goes way up in the air, you can't see the ball. <laughs> uh, Leeds United and their famous uh, Elland Road, a great uh, mixture of old and new. They've been here for many, many years, uh, but they've also done some work on the stadium. So this is the, the newer uh, east stand, but as you can see, they still have some of the old touches around uh, and on the inside, uh, it is large, it is usually full and quite loud, uh, but it still feels like a proper old-timey football ground. Uh, this is the one end, uh, I can't remember the name of this end, but that's uh, the South Stand, and uh, here it is uh, full of people before a game with Nottingham Forest when they had a scarf spectacular and they're singing, marching on together. Uh, Watford FC is an interesting one because most people might not really think of it as an old stadium because they've done a lot of work on it, uh, but uh, it has an old-fashioned feel to it and, uh, again, tucked into a neighborhood. And uh, But it is nice that it has some modern touches. Uh, the food and beer selections are actually quite good. So they've done some work on it, but still feels like a proper old-school football ground, uh, everything right on top of the action. And... Uh, in the Sir Elton John stand, uh, they have a, a quote, uh, how wonderful it is uh, while you're in the world, or that uh, famous song quote. All right, Norwich City Football Club um, out in East Anglia. Uh, again, um, not a super old stadium, but they have played there forever, and it feels like a proper, or <laughs> I keep saying proper, but yes, it feels like an old-fashioned football ground because it is, and it is right in the middle of downtown. Uh, it is... Still a fairly modern and comfortable stadium, but it feels old, and they played there forever, and it's right in the middle of town. So, And Norwich is a great city. Highly recommend going there. Here's our one entry from League One, uh, Fratton Park, sorry, the uh, home of uh, Portsmouth Football Club down on the south coast. This is the famous uh, entrance here uh, to Fratton Park. 
And again, uh, here I am uh, at the top of the staircase about to go into the seats, and you can see that you're right in the middle of a uh, neighborhood. Uh, the two side stands go back to the 1920s. Uh, this one here is the East Stand, I think built in about 1925. And other than uh, what people are wearing in that picture, that picture could be from about 1925. Okay, I had Sheffield United in here. Got to have Sheffield Wednesday in here lest I start a fight. Um, and, and Hillsboro is a seriously historic uh, stadium. Uh, you can see the old uh, touches here, the brick, uh, the old uh, turnstiles. They've also done some work on it. Nice creek that flows right behind uh, a newer part of the stadium. Uh, but again, old uh, turnstiles really feels like you're traveling back in time. And uh, this is the, the main stand uh, when it is packed out for the Derby with Sheffield United. And here's their cop end uh, passing a banner around over their heads. And finally is Luton Town, uh, just on the north side of London and their famous Kenilworth Road. And I say famous because, uh, as I said in my blog post, it is either gloriously awful or awfully glorious. Uh, even their own fans refer to it as a dump. Uh, but Kenilworth Road is just a unique kind of old school uh, place. Uh, this is actually one of the nicer uh, and more modern stands right here. Uh, but this just gives you an idea of what it's like approaching Kenilworth Road. Um, you sometimes have to cut down an alley uh, back behind someone's place uh, to get around to your entrance. Uh, this is actually the away team's entrance that is literally between and below a couple of uh, people's flats uh, to get into the oak stand the famous away end. Uh, my particular seat, I had a floodlight tower in front of me. It is a remarkable place. Look at the paint is peeling. Uh, there were puddles of water. Um, this is the plastic seats that they apparently just bolted onto the old concrete terraces in the main stand. Uh, and here you go. It looks to me like they went around to, uh, I don't know, rummage sales or something looking after uh, plastic seats. Uh, again, someday they will replace Kenilworth Road uh, and like a lot of these places, the new one will be better and uh, larger and a better revenue stream uh, and uh, all of that stuff. And everybody will agree that it's the right thing to do. But we're going to miss places like Kenilworth Road and Goodison Park and all of these other places. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed our little tour of historic football grounds around England. I uh, hope you will get over there soon and get to check some of them out. Uh, come see us at GroundhopperSoccerGuides.com. Uh, we have a blog. We have the book for sale. Uh, we do travel consulting. We sell tickets. We lead tours. Uh, and you can find out all of that uh, on our website. Uh, thanks for swinging by. Please subscribe to our video channel. And we'll see you at the grounds.